My name is Steve Orville, and I'm an engineer on the Lit team. And uh, today we're going to talk about the Lit Labs Motion package, um, and hopefully that'll be a, a fun thing to, to, to check out. Um, so what is what are we going to cover? Um, so first we'll kind of go over what the package is, some tips for how to use it effectively, and we'll illustrate those by looking at some examples. And finally, we'll look at the status and roadmap. So let's get started. So what is the Motion package? Well. Um, it's a set of lit directives for making things move. And right now we have just one, the animate directive, and it's actually a directive controller. Um, and we'll see why in a little bit. Um, but here's the code that kind of sets that up. This is the update method of the directive. And you can kind of see there that it calls add controller there on the, on the element. Don't worry about the details. Uh, we handle that for you. But if you do want to learn more about custom directives and reactive controllers, Definitely check out the docs on lit.dev. There's tons of great information there. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look before we go any further at some examples of what you can do with the API. Um, so let's go ahead and check out. This is lit.dev. I'm going to go up here to the playground. And you can see a whole list of examples here. And down at the bottom, we have a bunch on motion here. Um, so first, I'm going to just take a look at this sliding basic, super basic example, and we click this button, it sort of changes a class here with a click handler. And you can see the call to the directive when we don't need any setup at all, the styling is handled with CSS. Um, and we'll dive into the details in a second, but you can see it's just that easy to use. Um, here's an example, a little bit fancier with the lit uh, sort of logo or just uh, text animation. Um, and here's a really good use case where we're just sort of taking a list here make it a little bit wider, um, and just animating as we change the ordering of the list. And there's a little bit of a delay, um, and there's a little bit of setup here. Again, don't worry too much about the details. And if if the fidelity of the animation isn't looking that great, again, you can check this out on the playground. If you want to dive into the code more there, you can, you can uh, check it out and fork it and uh, modify it as you see fit. Um, we'll go over a couple of these a little bit later in more detail. Here's a carousel example. And again, the rendering is just done with CSS, but the animation is done again right here with just a simple call to animate. Nothing. Uh, there's some default options for sort of um, to make it do some you know, basic duration and stuff like that. Um, and again, the layout is, is handled with CSS and animate directive does the rest for you. Um, here's a, and I was hoping this would load faster but uh, this is using some MWC stuff. So yeah, it took a second. Here's a sort of canonical like to-do list type of example with two lists side by side. And we're using a little bit of a fancy um, uh, behavior that I'll show in a little more detail later. Um, and I, got, I went ahead and I, I did go running this morning. I'm not gonna order clothes today, but I did go running this morning. So I'll take uh, credit for that and uh, I'm going to give this talk. I'll add that and click it over there. OK, cool. I'm going to give myself credit for it, even though we're not quite done yet. OK, so those are just some quick examples of where we're going to go. Um, and let's talk about sort of how it works now. So under the covers, we use what's called the flip technique. And this was a term coined by Paul Lewis a few, few years back. And it stands for first, last, invert, and play. And first you measure and record the size of the where the rendering of the element is. Uh, then you kind of render it where you want it to go with CSS any way you want. And this is sort of the magic thing. And you record that position. Um, then you um, invert the position back to the first uh, rendering position um, with CSS transform. Um, and then you play an animation that just sort of undoes that. And what's magical about this is that it doesn't matter how we render the element and we use these fast uh, transition proper transform properties to do perform the animation. So it's pretty awesome. If you do want to know more about the details, there's a, a recent uh, YouTube video on this by uh, Jake Archibald and Cassie Evans that, Evans that goes into um, a lot of good detail about it. This is an awesome video and, and, and they're great. So I definitely recommend checking that out. 
Um, under the covers, we use the Web Animations API, which I just want to do a quick shout out. This is the docs on MDN. There's a lot of great detail there if you want to check it out. This is an awesome API that's now widely supported. And what's great about it is that you can configure animations with JavaScript, but then you sort of let them go, let the browser run them. And as long as you're animating properties like um, transform that don't cause browser layout, it's done off the main thread and it's super fast and it's really great. Um, Cool. All right. So let's kind of just get a little bit of a sense of how that comes together with the animate directive. So we have the sort of reactive controller lifecycle. First, there's host update. Then there's the actual element updating where the rendering occurs. And then there's host updated, which is after rendering. Um, so how do we perform? How does the animate directive perform the flip? So first, in host update, we measure the current rendering. We let the rendering just do whatever it wants to and update. And then in host updated, we measure the last position, compute the keyframes, and use element.animate, that web animations API, to play the animation. Um, and that's just kind of how it goes. OK, also in the package, I want to do a call out to there's a thing called the animate controller, which is basically just a helper to, uh, to coordinate multiple calls, uh, animate directives together. Setting some default options, it gives you a on complete for all the animations, uh, callback in case you want to do something, and some controls for playing and pausing. Um, and uh, we may do more there, but I just wanted to call that out. It's a, a useful uh, other uh, tool in the package. Um, all right, so that's sort of a quick overview of what it is. Let's look at some quick tips for using it effectively. So first, like, what are some really you know use cases when you really want to use um, the animate directive? So layout changes involving size and position, as we sort of saw on those examples. Um, adding and removing elements, using doing this with lists, where lit is really good at doing that kind of rendering in a really declarative, simple way. Um, and highlighting relationships with the elements. And I'll show an example of that in a second. OK, when is it maybe not the right tool to use? This is sort of just important to understand. Um, so, you know, CSS is great for animation and transition is useful in a lot of cases. And, um, you know, again, the flip is the flip technique is awesome because it can animate basically any way that you do that rendering, whereas CSS transition can only handle CSS animatable properties. And you can look those up on MDN, MDN but it's a subset of the kinds of rendering that you might need to do. Um, also, if you want to, you know, because we use transforms, to perform the flip technique. If you want to animate via uh, transform yourself, you should do that on, an, on a node that's not got the animate directive because that could otherwise conflict. Uh, it's a little gotcha to be aware of. Um, and then finally, if you're doing something really fancy that, uh, you know, there's a lot of great animation libraries out there. Um, and what we have so far is does not have something like a timeline or a lot of coordination primitives. So we may get there, but for now, you know, it's great to use those if you need a more complicated use case. So some tips for using the animate directive. Again, you can animate however you want. Flexbox, absolute positioning, CSS grid, whatever you want. It's awesome. You can use multiple calls to animate uh, together to produce some really cool effects like we just saw on the examples. Um, I'll also show an example of how you can use animate to avoid a little bit of a gotcha with text distortion. Um, and you can actually add to the flip technique. You can add any other animatable CSS properties, and we'll sort of just pull those in and let CSS do performance magic there. Um, we do have a guard function, just like task has, which will allow you to say when the animation should occur and make sure it does not doing those measurements on every single update, but only when certain data changes that are that you want to use to do the animation. And finally, you can do stuff. There's some callbacks. In particular, you can customize the frames to do some fancy effects. Um, all right, so let's dive into some examples really quickly. So first, we're going to look at a grid layout example. And let me see here if I can actually move my mouse to the right spot. There we go. OK, so let's go ahead and switch over here to our grid example. And this is just a rendering you can see over here on the, uh, this is a modification of, of the sample that we have on lit.dev just to make it a little bit simpler again it's very similar we're just going to apply a class using class map when you click um, and it's going to just call animate here again no setup needed and we're going to change the animation and we click here it does 
the change here. Well, how is that working? Well, you know, we're applying these classes and I hid the styles here, but we're using this really cool ASCII art version of CSS grid to make this go. I love that syntax. It's just the easiest to use, even though it's maybe not the most practical for really advanced use cases. And just to show this working, I'll go ahead and change the ASCII. So I made that D column here wider. And if I want to sort of show what these regions, oops, regions are, I'll then label them and then you can see. Okay, and then this is highlighting what I showed earlier, which or what I talked about earlier, which is the sort of text distortion that we get out of the box. We're working on maybe handling that automatically better, but for now you can do, and I just sort of have some DOM down here, which is the same thing, but slightly modified where I just did a little bit of extra nesting to put extra calls here. And what's cool about that is when we do that, it has a much nicer effect. So I just wanted to sort of call that out really quickly as a, as a mechanism you can use. So again, we sort of just showed that in this example, you can animate layout changes however you want. It's, it's easy and it's efficient. Um, nesting animations can help with that gotcha around text transitions. And I actually didn't highlight this, but we did actually customize the frames here. And I didn't really show, and I'm not gonna show that code right now, but it did create really simple way to create that little bouncy effect, as you can see there. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, one more example here that we're gonna look at, and this example is actually on the lit.dev, um, and that is this hero transition example, um, and it's just right here. So you can check it out in more detail because we're just gonna go over a couple things, and it is a little, there is a little bit to this one, um, but if I click here, you can see there's a list of cards and then when you click on it, we want to show a detail for this card. So it does this sort of zoom out uh, in our zoom in animation on the card. And then when you click it again, it goes in. Um, and you can see one of the things that we can show that's kind of cool is because we're using web animations, we can use the animate animations inspector in the dev tools here. And if we do that, it just sort of automatically slows it down. And you can kind of see there what's happening. And you can also, we also, we're using the animate controller here to, to um, pause the animation when you click. And, and I can kind of just, this is just sort of, I don't know why you'd ever want to do this. It's just sort of, we're showing this in the example here that we're freezing the state. Um, cool. Now, how does that work? And what does that have to do with flip? Well, what we're doing here, and these are this this um, card element and the detail element are actually different elements in the DOM. But what we've done is we've told our flipping technique in the in the animate directive to link up the use this card as the starting position of the flip that's going to be this uh, detail. And to do that, what we do is we give the an ID to the to the animation that we the, to the animate directive that we want to sort of use as the source and then this is the card and then in the detail this is the detail and again for um sorry this is the we give it um, an in id to say use this one as a reference um, and then we do the flip also so that we can go backwards. And again, if you want to see the details, please check out the example on lit.dev because um, there's a little bit to it here. But the key concept is to be able to link up that ID and the in ID to say to 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 create the sort of linking effect between the 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 um, elements. Cool. So there we saw basically that um, you know again, sort of just to emphasize here, the ID and NID link the two together so that we can synchronize and, and really show the relationship between the elements, which is one of the cool things that you can easily do, which otherwise would be a lot of boilerplate to set up. And again, it sort of did that spring effect with the long frames, uh, which I didn't show, but you can check out the code if you want. Um, okay, so where are we with this package? Well, it's we're really happy, but it still has a few things to work on. And we're really looking to refine the API um, and <clears throat> um, get some feedback to make sure we're covering uh, a bunch of sweet spots for you know the real sweet spot of the use cases that we want to hit. Um, and specifically, again, we're sort of want to refine the API. Uh, we want to do a little bit better support for animating elements before removing them. Um, there's some work in progress to make that better. 
um, more configuration around, better configuration around what, how the properties actually animate uh, when you kind of want to use certain properties for flipping and not flipping. Maybe some built-in support for springs, and Justin has a PR for that, which I just have to review. Um, <clears throat> some timeline capabilities possibly for the animate controller. And then we're really kind of, there's there's a concept coming to web animations called a scroll timeline, which may take a bit, but there's it's actually pretty simple to hook up to scrolling. So we may want to put that into the directive um, or, or provide an additional tool to do that because um, there's some cool effects that you can do pretty easily. Um, okay, and as a preview of some of the stuff that we're working on, I wanna show just one more example really quickly, and that is this accordion. Um, so this is actually turning off, this is very experimental right now. I have a version of this where I have an animate layout which turns off the, the flipping um, so that for an accordion, you kind of just wanna actually animate the height. <laughs> and um, so basically um, we've done that here. Um, and it does that kind of cool effect. The other thing that this does is it is it actually um, hides the elements so that the elements that are not uh, visible are actually hidden in the DOM, so they don't. There's no cost for them uh, being there in terms of rendering. Um, and again, we're sort of customizing the the frames because that's a cool effect. So this is sort of just a preview of something that we're working on. And again, as I mentioned, it animates height directly without transform, which is a configuration option that we want to make available. And we probably want to make sure that we have good support for doing stuff like hiding and showing elements before and after the animation. Um, and um, so that's that. So what did we cover? Well, we covered the Lit Labs Mocha Stream package, looked at some quick tips for using it effectively, dove into some examples, and really saw where we are on the roadmap. So that's all I have for today. And thank you, everyone.